Speaking of Toby, Tom, why don't we, why don't we go over mm. the choir's multiple, which is kind of a response to uh, Magic Formula. Oh, I'm I'm glad you bring it up. Oh, Jay. fantastic! <laughs> I just sorry. have a PDF of Magic Chroma. I don't have a physical copy. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been refreshing my memory on some of the actual returns and um, kind of what what Toby was trying to do this morning. But um, yeah, I guess Toby Carlisle basically read the Magic Formula, and and the first thing that sort of occurred to him was was Joel Greenblatt is screening basically on two metrics. So he's looking at how cheap the business is um, using an earnings yield, and then he's got return on capital for um, a proxy for business quality. Um, and the first thing that sort of occurred to Toby was like, what happens if you throw one of those criteria out the window and just focus either purely on return on capital or purely on just buying the cheapest companies, regardless of their quality. So that's basically what the acquires multiple is about is going through that back test. So this includes, um, basically running a few different strategies so he compares the s p 500 to the magic formula and interestingly in his back test he actually got slightly different return numbers than what joel greenblatt got but in the same sort of ballpark for the magic formula um he then looks at the acquirer's multiple which is ev ebit which um is fairly comparable to the just the earnings yield that joel greenblatt is using so just sort of cheapness and then he actually also uses another one which he calls pure charlie which is sort of influenced by Charlie Munger and um, that sort of does the opposite to the acquirers multiple. So um, instead of focusing on valuation at all, he just buys the best businesses on return on invested capital. And some of the returns are pretty crazy. So um, I guess Toby probably wouldn't have released this book if this wasn't the case, but uh, <laughs> but the acquirers multiple had the best returns. So um, in the like appendices of this and all this stuff's available online as well, there's various different back tests, which, um, look from 1973 to 2017 was the period of time that that was looked at and uh yeah various different back tests with different sort of market cap thresholds as well so he looked across could a few you, different could you give us some of the comparisons companies. just as like a reference um yeah sure so so if i go a uh, billion dollars or greater in market cap from 1973 to 2017 uh, S&P 500 did 10.2% per year, and this is total return. So this includes capital gains, dividends, um, everything. So S&P did 10.2% per year. Uh, Pure Charlie, which is just the return on capital metric, did 13.7% per year. Uh, Magic Formula did 16.2% per year, and Acquirers Multiple did 17.9% per year. So slightly better um, when you removed the return on invested capital metric, which yeah. in its own yeah. right did better than the S&P, which is also interesting. That's what I found really interesting as well. The pure Charlie strategy actually also beat the S&P 500. So, you know, obviously like it, it is only one or 2% different in that example, but that compounded over yeah. 40 years makes a very significant difference in the end even, number. Even over five to 10, that can, that can start to add up quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, so, so it is really significant. I think, um, one of the things you will find with the acquires multiple though is you'll get some much uglier companies because you're um, <laughs> you're not caring about quality and um, you know Toby's been very open in some of his um, in some of the interviews and stuff he's done that and saying that you know you can't just pick like one company or something out of an acquires multiple screen you've got to buy a basket because some of these go to zero like some of them are terrible companies that go bankrupt but if you buy a basket of them over a long period of time you do reasonably well and um or very well i should say <laughs> according yeah. to these back tests a and the other thing is i think the strategy seems to be more volatile than something like um the magic formula so um you can go through sort of more wild swings relative to the market um but again over a extended period of time it seems to perform well. i'd assume the volatility decreases if you increase the market cap or, or are you sure uh i'm not sure i think that if you give me a second that might actually yeah, be in here yeah, um I, just using like beta as the because i think uh greenblatt talked about that in the little book that beats the market as well if mm -hmm. if you want less volatility then just bump up the minimum market cap that'll probably do that for you um but you're yeah. also going to limit your returns. It's kind of, it's more of kind of a risk reward thing in the, the, the layman understanding of risk as being volatility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, hang on. The, the numbers vary a bit here between the market cap screens that would 
or back test that were done. But um, interestingly, Pure Charlie is actually the lowest volatility here. Um, so, yeah, I know most value guys aren't going to care that much about beta, which is just basically relative movement against the S&P 500. So, um, if anything, a beta it helps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get more wild swigs relative to intrinsic more, value. More buying right? opportunities so, if you're holding for the long term, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, a beta of one would be equivalent to the, the normal volatility of the S&P 500. So if you have a number greater than one, you're going to be more volatile, um, academically speaking, right? And um, <laughs> if you have a beta less than one, you're going to be less volatile. So um, all of them were more than one. So Pure Charlie, Acquirers Multiple, Magic Formula, had a, all had a beta higher than one. Um, Pure Charlie was actually the least volatile. So that came in at 1.02. Um, and this is actually the reverse of what I thought it might say, but acquirers multiple was 1.1 and then magic formula is 1.12. So magic formula actually looks slightly more volatile, which, um, it's kind of surprising actually to tell you the truth. But again, it'll, it'll vary depending on the samples that are used in market caps yeah. and so on. But, um, right. yeah, interesting strategy to just kind of throw business quality out the window and see what buying everything in the. It, it's totally a, it's very much a see what sticks approach which i guess is really yes. what it's kind of like regular old index investing you know you're buying a lot of bad companies but you're also trying to get the few good ones that carry like even with the the s p 500 like it's 500 something companies are around there and a huge portion of 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 the market cap <laughs> is in like the top 10 holdings so so like you're you're betting on a few holdings carrying a lot of the weight, maybe not all the weight, but th that's all you really need yeah. to carry your index. And in this case, it's just a more focused index on cheapness.